guys, Asher Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I am not alone. We got a three way collab here. I am joined by Saf from HH Gaming Network. Saf, what's up? Hey, man. How's it going? It's going great, man. It's going great. Long time no see. We have a Dragonair channel that we upload every single day to or every other day. Uh, so Saf and I have been collabing a lot lately, but you know who hasn't been on the channel in a while? My man, Cold Brew. Cold Brew Gaming, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited about this new content that's, that's been out. And, yeah. Uh, well, it's going to be out. Yeah. And, uh, can't wait to see how everybody, how is this everybody's takes on it. Yeah. Indeed. We got Clan Fortress coming. We got Clan Siege uh, as well. Basically, Clan Wars, right? So before we get into it here, I, I know this dropped maybe an hour or two ago, but I wanted to have you guys on to try to get like more perspectives than just my own on this, uh, because I feel like a lot of people at this point have seen the video. We'll watch a little bit of it, but I'll link it for you guys. We're not going to watch it in its entirety. So going into this, what were your expectations for Plarium, guys? When it comes to how are they going to do overall in Clan Wars, giving their track record, Cold Brew go first. I honestly thought it was going to be way simpler than, than what it is. Uh, after the video was out, I was like, wait wait a minute. Uh, I thought there was just going to be defenses and offenses by, by the clan against another clan. And that's, that's what's going to be it. But apparently it's not. It's going to be way more complicated than that with more depth and how way more strategy in terms of how you set up defenses and all that. Okay, so you were expecting not much, it sounds like. So it sounds like just the scale of this has already superseded your expectations. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I expect a lot more thought behind everything, especially on the, the higher end uh, of the clans, the more end game clans, which will be going for the first. I'm, I'm guessing there will be rankings and all that. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's definitely going to make things interesting. All right, uh, Saf, what do you think? What were your expectations leading into this? Were, did you have high expectations for Clan Wars or Clan Fortress or Clan Siege or whatever the heck? Yeah, so I, I mean, I was I was shocked by how many people were going, ah, it's going to be a terrible game mode of like, there's no real way they can mess this up. Like, it's it's either going to be just like Arena where nobody can compete or it's going to be can't be worse than Clan versus Clan, right? It can't you know be worse. I mean? it, it can't be worse. And uh, to be honest, I've seen this game mode in a couple of different games in various different degrees, right? Dragon, it has like a... It's a bit similar to Dragonair where you set up defenses and then you will go and attack those defenses. Um, I think Bloodlines Heroes of Lethus has very similar things as well, probably on more the scale of this. But I did not expect all the roguelike elements to be involved in this, where they're randomizing bonuses and effects and buffs. And also they're going to expand it in the future. So it's not like a one one time thing. So honestly, uh, as a clan leader, it terrifies me, but um, yeah. in a good way, because okay. I have no idea how we're going to coordinate this. I can't even say I was cautiously optimistic. I thought they were going to screw it up, honestly. I thought I would. I had very low expectations just because of Clan vs. Clan. Right? That was their first iteration of this is Clan vs. Clan, CVC tournaments. And it's like, dude, this is not anything like Clan vs. Clan. I knew that they were going to be better than that, uh, but I wasn't sure. I mean, for me, the fundamental issue here, guys, is how in Raid Shadow Legends do you make a, a fun Clan vs. Clan system or Clan War system that isn't just who spends the most wins. Like, isn't that everything at the at the end of the day? Isn't there just going to be, even if you're a whale, there'll be a bigger whale who beats you when you get to the top, just like everything else, right? That was my concern. So the way that this works is, sure, we have this clan fortress. We'll watch like one minute. I'll play like one minute of the video for you guys right now, just so you're on the up to speed in case you haven't seen it. But again, watch the entire video if you guys haven't seen it yet before, and then come back to this one. But the way that they did this, guys, my my quick take is that they did just about at first glance, because this is video one of two, I guess, right? At first glance, they did just about as well as I could expect them to do. It seems really cool, man. I'm even looking at like right now 746 as you were talking. It's just like, I like that you can pay the mana currency to change the conditions that the attacker has to use when attacking you. So for example, yeah. 165 mana for them to only be able to use HP-based champions when attacking you. So you can basically make your, your team around knowing that. I actually really like these, these ideas at least. We'll... Uh, We'll That's how you break happens. the meta, yeah. right? You yeah. basically set the defense up to say, you can only attack me with HP. Yes. Now I know what you're going to attack me with. I can set up a defense that's very good against HP. Exactly. So it creates this like kind of strategic elements of, oh, that person in my clan has got like the best HP champions in the game. Okay, I'm going to use them in that tower. Great, exactly. they can put that HP bonus. Yep. And then you'll have some people have caught a lot of Florins or something. They will donate to the central keep and then we'll have someone who's like an economy minister kind of managing it. This is the stuff we want to see. The big question for me is, 
is this systems in place to manage that? What are your thoughts, guys, about the uh, the actual like pay to win dynamic? You know, like uh, uh, what I just mentioned. Uh, Cobra, go ahead and go, go first again. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, anything they add is not gonna just completely eliminate the pay to win aspect uh, because there's always gonna be the maximum awakening, maximum empowerment uh, champions that an account might have that you know trump whatever uh, a clan that has just non-awakened non-empowered champions it's not going to be that powerful the bonuses that we get in this mode i don't think from the from the looks of it uh, but it still gives you uh, a little bit of an edge knowing that you have some buffs that might help you out especially the smaller clans maybe against the more medium-sized clans and it's not going to make it that absolute in terms of who wins and who loses every single time um, but hopefully uh, I, I'm proven wrong when the actual thing comes out because just from the video, we can't know everything just yet, I don't think. Yeah, this assess. so you're kind of like, uh, I would say, safe to say you're kind of up in the air on that, on the on the pay-to-win dynamic, Cobra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know there's always going to be a pay-to-win aspect to this yeah. game. That, that's the whole point yeah. of, cool. of, of the game is just making so money. So sad when you say it like that so overtly. I mean, <laughs> that's it's, the whole it's, point. Yeah, it's, oh, shit. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, in, the, in the end, they, they, they want to make money. They want to make the, the whales feel like the, the, what they've spent yep. Has, yep. has a say in every part of the game. Sure. Okay. Uh, Saf, what, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about the, the system as it relates to that, the, the money dynamic? <laughs> Yeah, I think what they've tried to do is learn from Centranus and the, the the challenges and the solutions that created for, you know, meta driven experiences. Like you look at Live Arena and Golf 4, like I'm sure you're you're aware, uh, Ash, like it's all mythicals, right? That is the that is all you see when you get to the top end of, of Live Arena. And I think what they're trying to do here is go, let's take the the good things of what Centranos did, which is force you to get a bit of champion diversity and try to add that into a clan mode, which is a little bit less Sintranos, right? A little bit less extreme. So these bonuses are going to encourage us, I think, to have different teams built in different places. Now, the big, big missing thing that's going to make this an answer to this question is, how does it all work in terms of me as a member of a clan putting my teams in? Am I limited to certain places? Can I only place it in like four locations? Can I place it everywhere? We don't really have that information in this video. We don't really know, you know, how is it is is it just gonna be a bit like Dragnet where it's almost like the, the top five people in a fifty person clan are the only ones that matter, or is it gonna be like you need you yeah. need to balance you need to strategically as a clan need to go, okay, well this person is, is not as strong as this person in my clan, so I'm gonna put them in one place and defend that that strong point. Yeah, and then the other ones can try and defend the other points. Like we don't really know how that's gonna work. And I think that is where the pay to win is gonna count, really, is how how limited well does the system help yeah. the lower players take part in this or is it just going to be that the kraken always dominates we don't really know any thoughts on that Colbrew? um yeah it's it's all going to be up to w when we actually play this to really know because from the video i haven't really understood on on how strong those buffs are uh, are going to be it, it, i just seen the the video frames on it and and i thought okay this is some of these look very strong, but are they really that strong when you actually play with a um, against the team, against the defense with uh, you know mythicals, awakened and empowered as I said before? So time will tell at least yeah. from my end. The way the way that I look at it is, I like okay. So first of all, Saf, I agree with you in terms of like I, I, I'm I'm going at this guys with, with like. Clash of Clans uh, colored goggles on. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Clan Wars and Clash of Clans, or at least old school. I haven't played in a few years. But essentially, you match up with another clan. You all have two attacks. You can attack. You can be attacked a couple times until you're destroyed or whatever. And then you score points, essentially, or stars or whatever. And then that's, that's, how, it, that's how it goes, right? There is no bonuses, or at least at the time when I stopped playing, there was no bonuses or anything like that to mitigate you know, their top performers versus your lower performers. But... Uh, the cool thing about the pros to the Clash of Clans system was, is your studs, your max town hall, 15s, whatever they were, you know, ideally the other clan would have the same amount. It all came down to matchmaking, right? And that's my first kind of concern. My first concern is, is just given live arena, so I'm I'm not super, super high, I don't know where you guys are, but like, I, I'm top 300-ish, 400-ish, and I time out on a lot of my searches, a lot. 
you know, like I can't find opponents. So I'm just wondering how many, I, I know there's not as many as Clash of Clans, 100 million active daily players or whatever. I know there's like 2% of that in Raid. My question is, is like, how is the match, we see matchmaking already is a massive issue in Hydra Clash in Clan vs. Clan, where if you're put up a tier, you're smoked. If you're put down a tier, you smoke everybody else, right? So it tells me that matchmaking in a fair way is not going to be enough, you know, to rely on. In other words, you're not going to get those even matches like you did in Clash of Clans where, oh, I have eight Town Hall 11s and you have eight Town Hall 11s. I have, you know what I'm saying? So my concern here is, is, is the bonus system and any other dynamic they can introduce to this enough to mitigate the unfair matchmaking? In other words, can a good strategic game plan overcome somebody spending a ton of money? You know, obviously there's going to be, that's a sliding scale, right? Like sometimes it's not going to be enough. But to me, the bonuses, the, the fact that they added those, like my long ass point that I'm trying to get to here is that I think they, they I think they did a, we only see the level one bonuses, the weakest, right? But, you know, to your point, Cold Brew, I agree. Some of these seem really dumb and stupid, like bomb champions who are HP based deal double damage or something. Like, do we have, I don't think we have any HP based bombers in the game, if I'm not mistaken. They're all attack. Anyway, some of them are really yeah. dumb. <laughs> like, you know, that make any sense. Uh, but some of them do seem powerful. I, I think that one is yeah. um, the, the bomb will do double damage to enemies who are HP. Oh, okay, it okay. Bomb debuffs. Wait, that... No. <laughs> bomb debuffs placed by ally HP and defense champions deal 50% more damage. Poison and HP burn debuffs also placed by them deal 100% more well, damage. There so aren't I guess... any HP and... I know, yeah, that, I know, I thinking, but like, yeah. why do they even have that? You know, so some of them like it, that one does yeah. have poison as well and in burn. So like, it's not worthless, I guess, but it's weird that they have the bomb there. Anyway, yeah. that all being said is some of these okay. seem really stupid. Some of them actually seem powerful for the, for the weakest bonuses. So that makes me, dare I say, cautiously optimistic about the better bonuses and how that potentially with the right strategy involved, kind of touching on your point of the complexity of this, Saf, uh, perhaps with a robust strategy and a really organized clan, you can circumvent a lot of the pay-to-win dynamics that I kind of mm -hmm. referred to. So, oof, that was my long-winded saying way. I'm actually a little bit cautiously optimistic with how they did this. It's not just the bonuses. It's also the thought that went behind the stronghold, the posts, the florins, the mana orbs. Like, I think that there's, it seems like even farming is a part of this in terms of the mana orbs and, and upgrading your clan, even if maybe you're losing which to me is is another cool thing they added in. Uh, any thoughts on any of that? <laughs> yeah, I, for me, I'm just looking at it from a, a leader's perspective, right? I lead yes. a clan. Uh, we have a, a cluster of clans. I lead one of them. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, okay, how do I coordinate and manage all of these resources and all of these bonuses? Because it seems like the user, like the player decides what they pick, not the clan leader. Like how much control do clan leaders have? How much is Raid really set up? for this level of optimization and customization, or, or is it going to be very, very difficult for a clan to, you know, almost like manage the, the event enough? Like with Hydro Clash, it's pretty straightforward because we can literally tell people, hey, you know, wait for us to decide are we going to do lots of damage or whatnot. Same thing with like clan quests, we can say, hey, just just take one a day. Don't, don't you know, just take one, let everyone get a chance. Where this one is like, is there any restrictions to a player just going in and selecting whichever thing they want, whatever bonuses and spending their florins and doing like, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare for me. Like I'm, I I, I need to see part two to kind of see yep. how re how how almost yeah. like you said, how much farming are we going to be doing per player? Really, that's what I'm that's what I'm yeah. missing. It needs a lot more coordination behind each clan if they want to really compete compared to what we have right now because um clan v clan is kind of fine you just do things in game and you get the points uh hydro clash is is as you said it's it's okay you still try to do as much damage as possible and sometimes you coordinate if you're going to tank your your numbers this week so you don't get a, a crazy matchup next week but uh this mode is going to need a lot more coordination and if it requires every member to coordinate it's going to make a lot of clans break again as as uh, Hydra Clash did and even CVC did when it was uh, launched because of the potential rewards, which I'm not sure they've shown. No, the no, they haven't really done much in terms of like giving you a reason why you're beyond the champion that they've announced. Like, there's, it doesn't really seem to tell you. Okay, well, it's cool. You you defended your fortress. Why? Yeah. 
Like yeah. what what for what goal? Because at least with Hydro Clash, we knew we would get Stone Skin, right? They told us that straight away. Stone right. Skin and Protection. And then obviously Hydro Clash, they added the accessories. Yeah. With C V C we get in those exclusive rewards, like the milestone rewards and personal rewards, clan gold and lots of different features. Yeah. There's not really like it feels like it, everything that you earn is spent within the same game mode. And the game well, mode can be fun, but at, it's gotta have a reward. At four eleven in the video. Uh, there seems to be two kind of reward resources, or, or maybe not, but at least one. It's victory points and clan victory reward. I know that obviously some of these are going to be spent within the actual game mode. Like, basically, I can spend my rewards to upgrade and build more fortresses in the future. They allude to other updates where you can expand pretty dramatically from the sounds of it uh, to your infrastructure, I guess, your foundation. So it's it, uh, it's unclear, but the way that it looks here, maybe I'm just being super reading too much into it, but the clan victory reward, it kind of looks like a great haul type thing, you know, going on, yeah, right? Yeah. Where maybe the bonuses that you get in here should affect and impact your account outside the game. I wanted to ask you guys that. Do you have any thoughts on people like it's a polarizing topic with the arena, for example, right? Like people don't like that it's tied, that PvP is tied to their PvE progress and their stats. Do you guys think that this, if you had your way, would would the bonuses and rewards that you get have a global type impact like that? Would you be in favor of that? Um, I, I don't think they would add another way to do that personally. I don't think they would add another great hole, uh, because it, it would be already too overpowered to have great hole bonuses, uh, then the uh, affinity bonuses and, and then have also this, it would just add too many, too many stats. So in what the do you game think we're going to get then? Be, you know, I think it's just going to be probably new the sets champion. of gear the, and the champion and then empowerment, uh, awakenings for the champion. So yeah, that's what I think going to be but who knows what they have in store yeah i would expect nice. a new variable set if i'm being honest it would make sense that this 90s, game mode is yeah. a place to drop it yeah. or maybe 90s. they give you like more chances to get zeal or impulse like you get in live arena that would be great because right now it's zeal is a great set but for the majority of players they'll never see a set come to fruition because it's so difficult like you need to win 35 times in live arena and that and you need to be in gold to get a good reward so more opportunities to get those sets could be yeah, pretty good yeah, well, that's the same with the Forge sets. Uh, I mean, if you don't really buy the the pass, you don't get as many chances. Sure, but they've, they've cycled Forge. them. What I'm saying is it's almost like yeah. you, you have to be in gold to get yeah. a yeah. good rating, a star rating, and then you have to win 35 times in gold. So for the average player, they'll get maybe one two-piece seal set, right? It's, it's so yeah. difficult to get anything out of it, at least with the Slayer or something with the Forge pass, you get like... What is it? Fifth, seventy-five legendary fragments yeah, for free. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. you still get in at least like you know a good way of almost like waiting the chance of a good a couple of pieces. Uh, but I yeah. do agree, like the Forge Pass is the same. If you if you don't buy it, you don't get anything from it. So it'll be interesting. I think they will add a new port variable set. I'd have thought like something new and shiny to chase because if it's just more of the same, then people, you know, you got to give re people a reason to go for this. Whilst yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, guys. I don't yeah. feel like it's enough. I don't feel like just a gear set or just a new artifact set and, and the pride of winning, right? I don't feel like that's in. Obviously, they do have the, the champion at the end, right? Mm -hmm. I still don't feel like that's enough. I feel like they need... Well, I can see, like, there's personal victory rewards and other victory points. So, it seems like there's other currencies. Even on the very bottom, I see, like, different tabs of let me move myself out of the way there's like reserve teams mana orb cash we got the battle record rankings so i mean they're definitely going to be a lot to it in terms of the rankings and stuff but i feel like there needs to be some sort of a tie-in but i'm sure i'm also in the minority there oh it looks like we have two defenses up on the top right i'm at like 309 right now but it looks like you have like two garrisons and then you have the mana orbs and then you have like the victory, the the token, yeah. the currency or whatever. I don't well, know. The mana orbs are for the upgrades. So the mana orbs won't be yes, any reward. That will yeah. be in the, the, yeah. the power ups. The florins, I guess, are for upgrading the levels of your your towers and things. So, like it's almost like the gold currency. Um, so they haven't actually revealed any like currencies actual... in this video that will actually be used as a reward currency that isn't like just currencies for the game mode. So it'll it'll be interesting to see. I think part two is where all this will come together. Yeah, like yeah. We, we just don't have enough information in terms of like how many fights do I do a day? How many places do I put a defense? Do I put a defense in every tower? Is there restrictions? Is there leadership control? Is there, 
you know, what are the ranking systems? What are the reward systems? How do you even get this champion? We don't know any of this. So I'm guessing part two will have that. Right. But they're going to have to come out with part two soon because it's out in six days. Like, plan to, <laughs> plan to figure out what right, yeah, they're yeah, going to do. Sense. Yeah, it seems like these these defense towers can have three teams, but it seems like you can have two teams. Uh, well, I don't know. Again, to, you guys, to your guys' point, it's just speculation here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any final thoughts, guys? We can definitely uh, do a, after we have all the info, of course, we can kind of share how these square up with our expectations in terms of the reality here. As you guys said, it seems like it's coming, you know, soon. Uh, any final thoughts on like what you still, obviously we talked about a little bit what we want to see. I guess let me rephrase. What do you want to see to make this a successful update from here? Like, what are you looking for? You know the the foundation. What what more do you guys want to see? Saf? Uh, yeah, so for me, I want to see almost the control elements of the system. Like I would like as a leader to have some level of control over the way that you know, people get it. I, I want to see what like kind of the matchmaking window is, like how long are these events going to last? How frequent are they going to be? Is it permanently enabled? Is it not? Um, I'm not so worried about the rewards. I'm more worried about how do I make sure that it's a fun system for the members of my clan yeah. and for anyone in mem in clans that actually they can feel like they're part of. Because I think in some game modes where I've seen this, unless you're a Kraken, sometimes you feel like you just kind of coast along sort of watching from the sidelines as they go yeah. and have little crack and wars for, with amongst themselves. Like and then, everybody needs to feel like they can meaningfully yeah. contribute, you know? Exactly. So that's yeah. what I'm looking for is like a meaningful contribution with good controls for the leadership and the deputies. Like they did say that they added lieutenant roles. So I'm going to guess that lieutenant roles must have something to do with this new, new system. Right. Otherwise, why would they add a new role that basically does what a deputy kind of does? So yeah. that's what I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing. All right. Cold Uh I, I would love to see participation rewards like the 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 losing clan should get something yeah. you know, like the hydro clash which they mentioned they're, they're gonna fix soon and i would lo also love to see shaving off some time from other parts of the game to allow for this to be a part of our daily tasks as we as we have them because right now it's gonna be crazy having this live arena right. doing cvc there's a ton of stuff to do every single day it's just it's too much it feels like yeah, I, if they can fix Hydro Clash, that will be good. So I don't have to run like two hours trunda. of Trunda every week. Yeah. That would be brilliant. Thank you very much, Clarem. Can we just like speed up the Hydro Clash performance in improvements and yeah. you know, maybe maybe kill off that team, right? We, trunda could be useful in Clan Wars. That, that could be why hey, you can make it go. relevant, right? Yeah. yeah. It it'll be yeah, interesting okay. to see if a different meta evolves at all, but I, I imagine it will probably mirror, you know, a lot of what we see in PvP. Yeah. But I think that Cold Brew, especially, I think those are two really good points to end with, man. Uh, especially the time, man. Because, like, you're right. Yeah. A lot of the other games, I, I play Watcher, and in Watcher, they have a, a, a guild versus guild system. I don't think it's, it's, not, it's not nearly as robust or good, you know, quote unquote, as we think this might be, but it still takes time. It's like a thing that you have to yep. do, even though it's every day, there's a battle phase. You can see a prep phase and a battle phase is going to be the same here. But even with that, it's a lot, you know? And if it's done well, you end up like your eyes. I remember in Clash of Clans for me, this was a big moment in 2016 or 17 when they added Clan Wars because you're actually watching all the time for what your your clan members are doing and stuff, right? It's kind of like Hydra Clash, but it's really amped up because it's this short period where you're fighting another clan. I'm sure most viewers have experienced something like this, the clan versus clan system, but it ends up drawing your attention naturally if it's good anyway to where you, you're not going to have the time that you have right now. So that's a really, really good one, man. I hope they, hope they do something. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Clan Boss was great, but... With PR, I feel like Plarium always, they miss the mark a bit, Some, you know? And like, if, because I know that they said we added auto battles to Clan Boss uh, because of big features that are coming this year. We want to like get ready for that. But you know what? You, you add the auto battle after the big feature, not a year before, right? Because it doesn't seem like yeah. it's, it's going hand in hand from a PR perspective, you know? So we'll see what they do. But I agree. That's a really good, really good flag, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, final yeah, question. I think as yeah. well, like yeah. um, Curse City, for example, is coming now. And, and for a lot of players, that can be, certainly for me the other night, several hours on one stage. So it's not even like we can say, well, you know, this is the only new thing. In the last 12 months, they, they've added 
quite a lot of additional time that we need to spend in the game. So doing things like maybe they can do like triple super raids on Doom Tower keys, or maybe they can reduce the amount of keys, double the amount of rewards. Same thing with faction wars. Maybe I can only yeah, have to run it once instead of they twice. It. It's so easy to do. It's just more, you don't even need to code it. You just change the numbers and the reward drops to mean less runs for the same quantity of rewards. That would be mm -hmm. better, I think. Uh, indeed, indeed, guys. I'm I'm excited for this overall. I don't know about you guys, but like I I like the strategic elements. I like that it's kind of a roadmap where you can avoid players as well, you know, or you can take down a certain yeah. tower to, you know, so we'll see how it plays out when we have all the info. The final question for you both, yes or no, or whatever. Are your clans excited for this? Like, are your clans talking about this or do they not care at all? <laughs> Cold I, I think fans <laughs> are, are excited. Uh, at least the one I'm at right now yeah. is excited. So it is something new. It is a content that is looks fresh. So... I don't think so cautiously cautiously excited again yeah 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 so, I'm, i mean for me it there's there's two levels right now we're talking in the leadership chat kind of going oh my god how the <laughs> hell are we gonna yeah, coordinate yeah. this this is a nightmare um <laughs> this is gonna <laughs> be interesting but i would imagine for a lot of clans like this is we've been crying out for collaboration features in this game for years like proper yeah. making clans more than just a, a location where you go to clan boss that's yeah. then this is feels like now for once you know could be a clan versus clan wasn't really the same thing that's basically just like a, a credit card slapstick game it's not really the same thing this feels like it's actually a deep complex game mode that clans have to coordinate and actually work together to achieve an outcome of success yeah hopefully that's what we get we won't know until we actually give it a go but it feels like, like it's a lot more complicated than i thought they were gonna it make does. it does Right. so much depth to it i know we're up against it here i know you guys are on a, on a timeline so i just want to thank you so much for being so generous to come on here discuss the uh the first look at siege clan fortress or clan wars in raid shadow legends cold brew saf thank you so much guys i appreciate you thanks a lot man yeah thanks for coming and uh i guess we'll be back here at part two when we know more information yeah you guys are yeah, signed yeah. up now watch out see what you did there uh guys check out these awesome uh youtubers check out their channels i'll have everything that you need uh to get in touch or to watch i should say and consume all the content here for cold brew and for hh gaming network in the pinned comment in the description below let us know how you feel about clan siege is your clan excited do you see any warning signs that we didn't see anything to get excited about that we didn't see let us know in the comments below thanks for watching and as always Take care, guys.